expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill, who is decked out in his Michigan gear because we got a big weekend ahead of us. Bowl games are finally here, all the good ones at least. We've had a couple already, but we're about to hit 2023 in just a few days. So today it's our big bowl blowout. And these are football games, not something else. Um, We're going to talk about that. Basically, we're going to do all the major ones that we want to talk about. Um, maybe get a little NBA action in there because there was some some meaningful things that happened. And then uh, we got to do week 17 of the NFL picks because that's coming down to the wire. It's really close, and there's only two weeks left in the season with some, some pretty meaningful games around the league. Yeah, I could pull off one of the... Not one of the greatest, just a decent comeback. A, a very good. <laughs> a, a, a pretty good comeback. Yes. I, yeah. After after a year where I finally thought I was going to make my comeback, and then two weeks ago now, I faltered mightily. But uh, we'll see how, how we, we stand. We will see if Joey chokes. Yeah. If he can handle the pressure. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> All righty. So the first bowl game that we wanted to get into right away is tonight's game. It's Oregon. At a reverse UNC, um, the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Say that one more time for the people that probably won't remember it at all. The San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. Because we have to throw advertising. The out. Holiday Bowl is actually one of them that I remember from a younger age. So. Yeah, but we have to throw <clears> advertising <throat> on everything nowadays, so it's crazy. Uh, so we got the young stud quarterback in Drake May. Going against the old man, Bo Nix. I love the fact that he's just, he's the old man. In college football, he's only like. I know. This is technically his fourth year. Yeah. He's so, like a yeah. true senior. Yeah, he's a true senior. But he's going to use his extra year of eligibility to come back to Oregon next year. Yeah. And, and it was big news that Drake May was going to stay at North Carolina because there's been a lot of uh, talk about tampering mm-hmm. in the transfer portal lately. And it's looking like it's pretty true all over the place. Co- coaches are complaining nonstop. Yeah. But Drake May released a statement saying he wasn't leaving North Carolina, and I think that's great. Yep. So he will be in the uh, crazy draft class of quarterbacks next year. Um, but what are your thoughts on this game tonight? It should be a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, if you're betting, I would take the over. Mm-hmm. Uh, North Carolina's defense has been atrocious for most of the season. Yeah. And Oregon's defense has been very inconsistent. They're either pretty good or just bad. So, yeah, if Drake May and Bo Nix can get into a rhythm early, I expect them to have a shootout. This could go into the high 30s, maybe 40s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'd pick either side, but I just I expect a high-scoring, very entertaining game. Yeah, the over-under is 75 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and both of these teams average over 35 a game, so it's a little interesting. Yeah. Nope. Noah Sewell is not playing in this game, correct? Uh, I'm pretty yeah he I'm pretty sure he's foregoing it. He declared for the NFL draft. Yeah, they've also had a few guys transfer. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say your prediction for this game is? Score wise, yeah, I'm going to go. I don't know which side. Okay, actually, I'm going to go UNC because Oregon has had a few. They're like two out of their top three receivers transferred. So Bo Nix has to find a new guy to target. And Drake May, I think Josh Downs is playing, his number one guy. But the, he also has a like, really reliable second and third receiver after him that have put up good numbers this year, too. Mm-hmm. So I will go 42-35, North Carolina. Or maybe it could come down to a field goal. It could be 38-35, but yeah, something around there. 
North Carolina, North Carolina wins by a field goal or a touchdown. Just writing this down to just make it, make it interesting, make it kind of fun. Um, but I think I'm going to go with UNC as well. And I'm going to go with, hmm, what I want to do. Listen, yesterday East Carolina scored 52 on Coastal Carolina. It yeah. was like 52 to 30. So <laughs> this this could be a yeah nonstop fireworks. I'll go 40. Uh, 40, let's do a fun one. Let's do 48 to 40 UNC. I, I, thought, I thought you were about to, I was about to say, go crazy, put them in the 50s. I thought about it. I thought about it. <laughs> let's make this a college basketball score. I, I think I'm also going to go with UNC. I don't know why. They just feel like they've been underperforming as of lately. If UNC scores 48, I think that means Drake May has a monster game. Yeah. Like four hundred something passing yards, like six touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, which I think he's gonna have to kind of do to a certain. He's been a one man show for a lot of the season. So yeah. Um, anything else you want to touch on in this game at all? Uh, no, not really. Just looking forward to yeah seeing those two qu- quarterbacks go at it. Yeah, it should be it should be a fun one. Uh, Thursday tomorrow, uh, we wanted to bring up the Valero Alamo Bowl. Classic. Which is Texas taking on Washington. What are your thoughts? I think I'm going to go with Washington. Okay. And part of it is because it is just a very Texas way to end the season. (laughs) Before the season, I said if they won seven or eight games, it's a successful season. And Texas fans aren't satisfied (laughs) because they're Texas fans. They are, a lot of them already think Sark should go, mm-hmm. even with Arch Manning in that great class coming in. And they there were some major inconsistencies from their extremely, extremely, extremely highly rated and hyped quarterback Quinn Ewers, who was a freshman. Yeah. He had his ups and downs, only fourteen touchdowns to six interceptions. <laughs> It would be a very fitting into the season for them to go eight and five, and for Texas fans to be just very upset about all of it. Mm-hmm. And I think Michael Penix and that Washington offense—they've just been rolling for most of the season. Yeah, that game where they went into Oregon and uh, upset them, pretty much knocked them out of playoff contention, mm-hmm. showed how dangerous they can be when they're on point. And Michael Penix, honestly. It's not talking about enough about how dangerous of a thrower he is. Mm-hmm. Even with the numbers he's put up, I think he is a guy that will be a sleeper in the draft next year because he also announced he's coming back to Washington. Yeah. He has a absolute missile of an arm. He can throw it anywhere at, on any side of the field. He has good touch, but he likes to put a lot of heat on a lot of his throws. Mm-hmm. He can make all the throws. So I think Michael Penix outplays Quinn Ewers it could go the other way I don't know Quinn Ewers has had moments where he's shown his level of talent but Michael Penix has just been more consistent so I'm going to go Washington okay and I'll go a score of Texas's defense has been inconsistent too mm-hmm. I uh, 35 24 okay yeah I think Washington might jump out to like a like a fourteen nothing lead, yeah, and then t- like Texas claws back into the game, and then Washington separates mm-hmm. in the second half. I think I'm going to take Texas in this one. Uh, I think it'd be easier to take Texas if Bijan Robinson was playing. Yeah, obviously they, they still have some talented backs, and that's kind of what my reasoning is going to be. Uh, Roshan Johnson is out too, but yeah, they yeah. still have guys. So I think they can still, and that would have been even. Another easy way to do it where, okay, B. John Robinson isn't playing, but Roshan Johnson is, and he's a senior, but he's not playing either. So I think they just have enough talent, and maybe, again, the uh, the talent of Quinn Ewers shows up their at the de- right time. Their defense shows up like every other game for some reason. Yeah. So I'll go Texas in this one. I think this is more of a – I mean, they're all kind of tossed. It up, could be a surprise, like, low-scoring game because Texas that's, held TCU to 17 points. That's kind of what I'm like – feeling is it's going to be more and this, of this a, is kind of going to be like a home game almost mm-hmm. so you you have some points i'm gonna go let's go 30 to 
30. Hmm. I don't know if 18 is. I feel like they could score more than 18. That would be like the. Have you ever seen the account Scoregami that keeps track of? Yeah. I think I don't, I've never seen a 30 to 18 score. Yeah. So there have to be like a safety in there and like a missed field goal or something. That'd be a strange score. It's bowl season though, so who knows? Right. Yeah, let's do it. 30 18. Who cares? <laughs> Go for it. <clears throat> Why not? But we'll see what uh, Quinn Ewers does uh, in the bigger moment. Yeah. I also, I think. The Oklahoma and Florida State matchup at 530 in the Cheez-It Bowl. Mm -hmm. One of the fan favorite bowls now because of how ridiculous they get with the Cheez-It like commercials and stuff. Yeah. I don't know why they matched up these two teams just based on names. Florida State is so much better than Oklahoma right yeah. now. Yeah, a like, nine and three team versus a six and six team. Yeah, like this this could almost be on a smaller scale, like what LSU did to Oklahoma that year, Joe Burrow and then won the national championship. When they were up like thirty eight to like seven yeah at the end of the first half the only thing going for oklahoma in this one is just they they do tend to score a lot but at the same time like florida state's defense tends to hold people a lot so it's one of them is going to win out yeah so it'll either be could be a really close game but it could be a I, I, I see it maybe getting ugly yeah um all right moving on to friday um the big one friday night is tennessee at clemson Tennessee and Clemson. I'm so used to saying that. Uh, the Capital One Orange Bowl, of course. And two teams that kind of limped limped to the end of the season. And, yeah. This one is going to be a little odd. But what do you see happening in this one? So, I, I'm very interested in this game because it's K Club Nick's first start for Clemson. DJU, DJ <laughs> Uyunglele transferred. Mm -hmm. He actually made his decision last week. He's going to Oregon State, which could be a really good move for him. Yeah. Trying to get to the NFL next year. But yeah, K Club Nick, true freshman, top three quarterback in his class, making his first start. They're going to have a bunch of young guys on the offensive side trying to make plays and show out mm -hmm. and show what they can do for the future. <clears throat> they also have many defensive players that could get drafted that are probably going to try to show out also. Mm hmm. Tennessee is going to be without Hendon Hooker. Joe Milton is probably getting the start. And he won't have Jalen Hyatt. Yeah, Jalen Hyatt is out too, so they're also going to have to have other guys uh, up show up. So I'm really interested in that one. I am going to go with Clemson. And part of it is Tennessee's defense. Another part is Joe Milton's inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. I want to see what happens if they put in a younger quarterback. I don't think uh, Nico – I'm going to mispronounce his name right now because I haven't heard enough, but I think it's Nico Iamalieva, top five quarterback in this class. He's an early enrollee. He's already practicing with the team. I don't think he can play. <laughs> but they have another guy that's a freshman named Taven Jackson who's a four-star out of Indiana. If Joe Milton gets benched, I want to see what Taven Jackson can do. I'd love if Nico could play, but I feel like he can't. But, yeah, I'm going to go Clemson because of their defense, even if they have guys sitting out. Yeah. And I think Cade Klubnick showed in the ACC championship game and the times he's been in games. He's very poised, he's accurate, and he knows where to put the ball already as a true freshman. He doesn't get rushed very much. I don't think Tennessee's defense has the pass rush to, like, put a ton of pressure on him. Mm -hmm. So I think he could have a really good game and give Clemson fans something to be excited about going into next season. Mm -hmm. So, in this one, Tennessee has a high-flying offense, but I I really don't know what they'll do with Joe Milton, at quarterback. Yeah. They blew out Vanderbilt, but that's Vanderbilt. Yeah. This, what, what, what could this game be? It might take Clemson a few series to adjust to Tennessee's speed of offense. So, it could be high-flying to start, and then as teams settle in, I'm going to go with a score of 34. Actually, I'm going to go 38 to 28, Clemson. I think K. Clubnit, I think once he settles in, he throws some touchdown passes and takes advantage of Tennessee's uh, negatives on yeah. defense. I'm also going to go Clemson. 
uh, I think just for the de defensive side of the ball. Um, I think Tennessee missing their all their top guys hurts them more than Clemson missing DJ and that guy <laughs> and that. So is Will Shipley Will Shipley's playing, right? Yeah, he's only a sophomore. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like he might be able to take control of this game as well. It, uh, You're right. It, K. Klubnik will probably play well, but this could be a big Jordan Shipley game. Yeah, so I'm going to go – I think they'll slow the game down a bit, but they'll still be able to score. I think I'm going to go around the same. I'm going to go 35 to – Will Shipley, not Jordan Shipley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 35 to 21. Go with the old yeah. classic score. Also, just a silly side point. I love that two orange teams are playing in the orange bowl. Yeah. Just, I, I love it. Just a, an aside. Yes. Um, the other game that's going on that day is Notre Dame in South Carolina. Should be kind of interesting. Yeah. Drew um, Pine already transferred. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure who they're going to start. Yeah. And uh, I think Spencer Rattler is playing. He hasn't announced he's transferring. I was going to say, I haven't heard anything that he's leaving or anything so yeah honestly i think i would probably take uh, what would i take south carolina they played they had some really good wins to end the season but notre dame could just like bully them mm -hmm. even though it's uh, you know what i'm gonna go south carolina yeah. yeah i trust spencer rattler and what that offense has done in their last three four games and their ability to make some plays on defense when they need them. I trust that. So I'd take South Carolina in that one. Yeah. I, th I think I'd take South Carolina as well. Uh, Michael Mayer is not playing for Notre Dame either. He's going for the draft. So, yeah. And then it's Saturday. We'll Who say plays that day? A few teams. <laughs> a few teams. You Who may plays? know. You may, you, you may know a couple. I know Kansas State and Alabama play at noon. That's a big one. That is a big one. I'm actually I'm really excited to watch that game. Um, actually. what do you what do you think about that game? Uh, I, down for us. I am so excited to see Deuce Vaughn versus Alabama in an SEC defense because I want him to show the rest of the country that doesn't realize how good he is, and a lot of people may not know who he is mm -hmm. at all. I want him to show that at his size, he can play against anybody, and I think he will. I think Kansas State has a chance in this game. Yeah. I don't know if they'll win, but I think they have a chance. I think Deuce Vaughn shows his talent. Is Will Anderson playing? I don't know if he is. I have no idea. That's the hardest thing to keep track of is yeah. guys that are leaving for the draft, um, if they play or not. Um, Even if he plays, Alabama's defense has been inconsistent this season. Mm -hmm. They haven't had the punch that most that Alabama fans – I used to seeing from them. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to predict a score or a, who wins, but I'm I'm just I'm really excited to see what Deuce Vaughn can do and what Kansas State can how they shape up against Alabama. Yeah. In that game. I mean, I think the good thing is like Alabama is like Bryce Young is playing in this game, so that should be good for them. Um I don't know if Jameer Gibbs is playing or not though. I haven't heard about that either. Um but I mean, just having Bryce Young is Pretty solid. Yeah. Um, what was your prediction? I said I wouldn't predict a score or a winner. I just oh, yeah, this is one I'm just excited to watch. Okay. I think Alabama's just gonna win. That's just my thought. It's a. I mean, I can't blame you. <laughs> I yeah. Can't blame you. I don't like to go chalk, but this is the last time something like this happened. I think in twenty, it was twenty thirteen, when Oklahoma beat Alabama in the was it the Sugar Bowl. I think it was the Sugar Bowl. Oklahoma upset Alabama. It was Derrick Henry's first game ever starting. Oh, uh, yeah. And, yeah, Oklahoma took him down. <laughs> That's funny. Um, another game in this one uh, at this day, the Trans-Perfect Music City Bowl, Iowa, Kentucky. Nobody cares. No one Except for the big cares. Will Levis lovers. They care. Which Cade, is not us. Cade McNamara cares because yeah. he, he he said, and I quote, Please say our offense is terrible going into next season. Mm. Please keep saying it. Was it was it Eric All that followed him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Him and his yeah weird cryptic quotes. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I hope they do well though when they go to Iowa. Yeah. All right, Malik. It's time to talk about it. The inevitable. Oh boy. The four o'clock playoff game. At the Verbo Festival. Yeah. 
The TCU Horn Frogs taking on the Michigan Wolverines. Tell me how you feel. Half of me is nervous because I'm so used to seeing Michigan football, seeing their bubble burst after good runs for so many years. But I'm also riding on a high that I've never been on before <laughs> because I've never seen Michigan wins two straight against Ohio State, beat them in Columbus, mm -hmm. and now they're favored in a playoff game. <coughs> Michigan is favored in a playoff game Yep, against another very quality team. Seven and a half point favorites. Yeah. Max Duggan is a Heisman favorite. I saw something earlier today that – um. Uh, what's the, the receiver's name for TCU? Quentin Johnson. Yeah, Quentin Johnson. Some people have him ranked as like one or two top receiver in the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. uh, Kendra Miller has been a really good back for them. And they have a pretty good defense. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard for me to predict this one because Sonny Dykes has said, and a few pressers that the key to stopping Michigan is all about stopping the run. Mm -hmm. They know that JJ McCarthy has the ability to win games for them if they stop the run. Yeah. But ultimately that's how you weaken their offense. Mm -hmm. And I agree with them. Now I, I haven't done the deep dive of like TCU's run defense rankings. Yeah. And how they stack up. I've seen them perform very well. They held B. John Robinson to under a hundred yards rushing. Mm -hmm. So I, I know what they can do. Yeah, when they, it comes to stopping run games. They want a slugfest in that one, 17 to 10. Yeah. They were able to knock off Texas. Yeah, I've seen them hold strong. Bijan, I've also seen them give up in, big plays. In that game, Bijan Robinson ran 12 times for 29 yards. Yeah. So but, that's, I feel like that starts to be almost an anomaly. Yeah. Like I Also, they played against West Virginia, and they gave up a good amount of yards passing and rushing. Mm -hmm. And it came down to like the last few minutes of the fourth quarter uh, at West Virginia. Right. So they've shown they can stop really good running backs, and they've also shown that they can kind of look past people. Yeah, they definitely won't be looking past Michigan, right? But they do have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. oh, man, both teams average about forty points a game, but both teams allow way less. Yeah. So something's got to give here. When it comes to like picking between what's in my heart and what's in my head. When it comes to picking what's in my head, I really – I think Michigan should win the game, but I don't know what the exact scenario is. Like, is it how they beat Ohio State and Purdue? Because the, those last two games showed, like, the balance that Michigan needs to have and can play with mm -hmm. to win big games. But they didn't do it consistently throughout the season. Yeah. And they had Blake Corum to carry them for a lot of it. But I feel like Donovan Edwards has shouldered the load oh, yeah. pretty well. He's 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 breaking out as as the number one guy going into next season, and could be one of the best running backs in the country. <clears throat> JJ McCarthy has grown. <laughs> the defense has continued to grow. They've they played more of a bend but not break offense where they'll let you gain some yards, but once you get close to the red zone, they start shutting you down, holding teams to field goals. Can they stop Max Duggan? In those types of situations, because TCU is going to take shots, mm -hmm. and they have the receivers to hit some big shots. Yeah, can they limit those? Yep, they did it against Ohio State. Yep, Ohio State wasn't able to establish a major run game. They'll have to be able to stop Kendra Miller consistently. I think they have what it takes to do it. I don't expect it to be a blowout. I'm going to go Michigan. And I'm going to go by the score of 27-17. Okay. So, a decent win. Yeah. I'll go 27-17. All right. I'm going to be I'm, the negative I'm, one. I think, it's, I think it, it might be a higher scoring game than that. Yeah. But that's just what came at. Well, I'll tell you right, right, now. right now, first off. I have TCU 28-24. And my belief is that if I keep being negative, Michigan's going to keep winning. 
Because so far it stayed true. Okay. So here's a scenario. Max Duggan against Kansas State played his butt off and went crazy. I think he's going to try to do that again. And this time he's going to redeem himself and maybe make, you know, a game winning play or something like that. Um, I think they may find a way to slow down Michigan just enough to take an early lead. And then Michigan playing from behind, which is what I said all season is kind of their, would be their hardest thing to do. Um, so I think Max Duggan and Quinton, Quinton Johnston might get rolling right away. And then Michigan's on the back foot and it changes their game plan a little bit. And then that's how it happened. That's the only way that I really see it happening. In my heart of hearts, I feel like Michigan's going to kind of roll over TCU. But I can see a scenario where that happens. Listen, I, Michigan is kind of like a better version of what Kansas State was. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kansas State is. Right. And Kansas State beat them. Yep. <clears throat> so. Mm-hmm. No, I know. Trying to just work into some reverse psychology for you. I understand it. I want to make sure that we do a show next week, you know. <laughs> I'm here no matter what. I've been here through the bad times. Yeah. Um, but on the other, I mean, for the Michigan side, I think J.J. McCarthy has shown enough for me now that he can handle the bigger situations. When it's time to make a play, he can do it. Yeah. I still don't believe that he's like some generational talent necessarily. Um, but I think the run game helps them so much in so many scenarios. And at this point, like Donovan Edwards has shown that it doesn't matter who they're playing. He's going to find uh, big gaps. And yeah, Mich- Michigan's O-line <laughs> won the Joe Moore Award mm-hmm. once again. That's the yep. point I yeah, just wanted to throw in. And in these last couple games, like Michigan's gotten so much help from all their secondary receivers. Like We thought at the, at the beginning of the season it would be Ronnie Bell, Ronnie Bell, Ronnie Bell. It hasn't been. Like, it's been all over the place. Like Cornelius Johnson stepped up huge at Ohio State. So, I mean, Michigan has a lot of opportunities to take this one and run with it and make it into the championship game. We'll just have to wait and see. How would that sound, Malik? Michigan in the national championship. Uh, If you told me two years ago that Michigan would be in the national championship in in 2022, Mm -hmm. I would have... I would have done more than said you were. I would have said some things I can't say on this show. <laughs> I would have said a lot of things that essentially say you're insane mm-hmm. and you need to get away from me right now. <laughs> but it's 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 here. It's almost possible. Yeah. All righty. And then the nightcap. The Ohio State Buckeyes taking on Georgia in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Georgia's a six and a half point favorite. Um, but I've started hearing more and more people be optimistic about Ohio State lately. Uh, how do you see it swinging? I think the the only scenario Ohio State wins this is if C.J. Stroud, he has to play close to flawless. Mm-hmm. He has to play close to flawless, and their running game has to be fully established in the first half. I don't think Ohio State's defense has the down-to-down consistency or playmaking ability to stop Georgia on offense. Yeah. Because they have so many ways to get what they want, Mm -hmm. whether it's the run game, whether it's throwing it to their multiple high-level tight ends, Brock Bowers being the top in the country, or throwing it deep to Ladd McConkie or throwing a screen to him or something. Which I, I I honestly I can't remember if he's out for this game or not, because he got hurt in the SEC championship. Mm-hmm. But they would have to make it a track meet, which it's possible. Mm-hmm. It is possible that they finally get to this game and put together their first complete game. Yeah, and they make it a track track meet that Georgia can't keep up with. Right. But because I just haven't seen it. It was supposed to show up against Michigan. I, I maybe did, would you say at Michigan State? Did you would you say that kind of was like their complete game? 
Mm -hmm. they were like in control for like all of it. Maryland, they showed flaws. Northwestern, they couldn't dominate in the run. Like they're half the games. They just didn't show what Ohio State fans expected. Yeah. No, I don't know. It's it's hard to say because like they blew out a lot of teams, but a lot of those teams weren't that good. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's what they they would have to put together their first complete game of the season, mm-hmm. and they would have to kind of do for a full game what they did against Penn State mm-hmm. for like the last two quarters or like quarter and a half against Penn State, where Penn State came out, they were going punch for punch with them, mm-hmm. they were staying in the game, they kind of had control, and then Ohio State just turned it on, and they were able to do it against Penn State because Penn State they were a quality team, but they weren't one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. So Ohio State was able to turn it on. And JT Tui Molau was able to make a few high level, incredible defensive plays. They need something like that to happen. But they they have to be even better than they were against Penn State. Yeah. Like if Georgia is in control of this game for more than a half, I don't know how Ohio State like just punches back and just takes off. Mm-hmm. Because their defense is more talented than Michigan and <laughs> Penn State's. They've got all the dogs, pun intended, mm-hmm. on defense. You got Jalen Carter. You got uh the the defensive the uh, the freshman defensive back. I can't remember his name, but he's been an absolute stud from day one. You've got guys all over the place mm-hmm. on Georgia's defense. They can get pressure. When you put pressure on CJ Stroud. That's when he starts to make mistakes and starts to get inconsistent. Yeah. And I also think Ohio State's play calling has been weird all throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Ryan Day really pushes the envelope with C.J. Stroud, like trying to get him to like dominate games. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, sometimes they can, sometimes they haven't. And they also haven't been able to establish the running game consistently throughout the season. So I, I, I it's it's too hard for me. To see Ohio State, they win maybe two out of ten times. Yeah, if they play ten times. But uh yeah, I I just see Georgia winning it, mm-hmm. even if Ohio State can like stay close for for two quarters. Yeah. What would you say the score? I will go. I mean, I don't know if they'll break like they did against Michigan, mm-hmm. because. Once the doors opened, Donovan Edwards just kicked it through twice, mm-hmm. and they scored forty-five. But it's possible Georgia could do that. But I'm honestly, if Georgia, if there's a there's a scenario where Georgia gets up like seventeen nothing in the first half, mm-hmm. and they kind of not intentionally take the foot off the pedal, but be, because they don't have like Ohio State level receivers. Yeah. So they don't like fully turn it up on everybody. They turned it up on LSU. Yeah. And LSU like started to score and come back a little in the second half. But they put up what didn't they put up like 51 on LSU? <laughs> yeah, they put 50 up. Yeah. And even against like, Georgia Tech, which I know is, you know, not the greatest team. They put up 37 against Georgia Tech. Took and up, they 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 played asleep for like half the game. And they put they put 45 up against Mississippi State. Like that that's why when Georgia plays their best, there's just no stopping them. Mm-hmm. Even they're not as much of a juggernaut as they were last year, but they're still the number one team. Yeah. And I I, I just, I'll have to go Georgia because of how inconsistent Ohio state's defense. I'll go Georgia 41 and Ohio state. I'll give them 28 because either a hot start or a garbage time touchdown or mm-hmm. two, I'll give them 41, 28. All right. Um, I also have Georgia winning. And kind of funny enough, I have Georgia putting up 38. I have Ohio State fumbling. Hmm. You think the the bottom just falls out? Yeah. Uh, I think, I don't know, something just happens. And I mean, they're they, just... they, they're not the same Ohio State we've seen. So, yeah. Although that would be, that would kind of be a first in a big bowl game. Yeah. I don't, I've, I haven't seen them just completely like mm-hmm. bottom, but. That would be a sight to see. And I could just see Georgia getting a lot of pressure on C.J. Stroud, making him really uncomfortable. Um, so I have 38 to 15, hmm. which would be wild. And I, I realistically, I think Ohio State's 
offense can do something in this game. Yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna have at least four to five drives in either in either half where they're like going and it looks like they're gonna make something happen. Yeah. Um, and then I I just think that Georgia, if that happens, they're gonna go to that bend don't break mentality. Yeah. Actually, I'll say two to three drives. But give yeah. up a few field goals maybe. Um, and I mean something that's pretty interesting is like. Stetson Bennett, he has more completions, more attempts, more yards than C.J. Stroud. Obviously, he doesn't have the touchdowns, um, but he's... He's been incredibly efficient. He's been good. He's like a good quarterback for this team. Um, so, and, he, and he can run. Yeah. I think that's also a difference. Mm-hmm. C.J. Stroud's... And I don't know if it's because he won't run or it's because they just don't want him to. Yeah. But him not running has handicapped this offense... And in certain games and in certain ways. Yeah. And, I mean, Stetson's been here before. Stetson isn't afraid to get out there. So, I don't know. That's just my thought. So, I think it might be a blowout. I hope it's not. I I, I always hope for good games, but just kind of my thought. All righty. Those are the big uh, playoff games. But there is uh, some games on January 2nd. We got Tulane playing USC for the Cotton Bowl Classic. Should be kind of interesting to see the green wave against uh, a Caleb Williamless USC. Yeah, they they still their backup Miller Moss was a like high four star guy out of California, mm-hmm. so he still has some talent. But what is the care factor in this game? Right. How much after that Utah game? How excited are they to play? Mm-hmm. Like, I I really I think a lot of them will take Tulane lightly. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of because they still don't – USC still doesn't have the roster full of guys that they need yeah. to put their foot on teams' throats. Mm-hmm. They won a lot of close games this year. They still aren't the most talented defense. And Tulane has a quarterback, a guy that a lot of people, they want to, they want, they want to see if he goes into the transfer portal. Because if he does, he'll be a top three guy. Hmm. Michael Pratt for Tulane. He is a high-quality group of five quarterback. A guy that can make all the throws, and he's athletic. I think he shows up in this game. Yeah. I think Tulane has a You know what? I'm going to take the upset. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to say Tulane beats USC 35-31 to in a thriller. Go Green Wave. Yeah, I think I think this is a good chance for Tulane to do something. Um, should be pretty exciting. I think I'm going to go with USC just to come out on top. Just a little bit more talent. Um, sometimes, you know, these smaller, quote-unquote, smaller schools, when they play the big time, kind of get run over sometimes. I don't think Tulane's going to get run over, but I do think it, it'll at least be a decent one for USC. Now the spread, I mean, it's all the way down to two for this game. Yeah, USC is only favored by two, and the over under is sixty two. So, could be a high scoring affair, which would be fun. Um, let's see, what my score be? Let's go forty. Yeah, let's do forty two to twenty eight. USC. Two Just, touchdowns. Yeah. So it's pretty confident. It is. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know much to think about this game, really. I, I just. I don't trust USC's defense. Yeah. After after the season, after that Utah game, mm-hmm. and not having Caleb Williams to carry them. Yeah. And make wild plays. Mm-hmm. Miller Moss is a pocket guy. Yeah. He he's not gonna run around and make the impossible possible right. like Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. He I think he will stand in there and drop some dimes, but I they're not as dangerous. Yeah. Right now. Yep. Uh, the two weird games on this on Monday are Mississippi State, Illinois. Should be kind of interesting, um, but I don't care too much about it. And then LSU, Purdue. Sure. Why not? But the night the nightcap should be fun. Penn State and Utah for the hat that you're wearing, the Rose Bowl. Not a Rose Bowl isn't as exciting as it used to be. Not anymore. But uh, it's still one of the, the higher up bowls. And Penn State and Utah should be a good one. 
Yeah. Um, I'll take Utah after the other. They were in control of, of Ohio State, and then C.J. Stroud and Jackson Smith went nuts. Yeah. So I think they will really want this one. Mm-hmm. I'll go Utah. Plus, yeah. who trusts Sean Clifford at this point? Yeah. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I agree. I think Utah, yeah. I don't know if they can run away with it, per se. I mean, well, they definitely have the capability to. Um, but will they? I, I don't know. It's hard to say. The way that they looked um, against USC was pretty, pretty convincing. Yeah. Um, but they have they have stumbled randomly throughout the season. But I would I think I would go with Utah as well. Um, what would my score be? Probably. Give me thirty four to twenty Utah. I don't see Penn State scoring a lot, even though Utah's defense has been up and down mm-hmm. this season. I I just don't see Sean Clifford. <laughs> I, he he can't do what um me and forgetting names, man. I don't know why this happens. What is happening to me, Joey? I don't know what is happening. Cam Rising. I think Cam Rising is a better quarterback than Sean Clifford, and has the ability to make many more plays. Mm. Yeah. So I'm going with Cam Rising. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I'd go 38. Mm. 24? Sure. 24. 38 24. Not too confident in my scores, but that's fine. Um all right. That's uh all the major bowl games besides of course the uh national championship which we will preview next week. Um we have a little under 20 minutes, so let's go through picks real quick and then what time left we have, we'll talk about the NBA. So, Week 16, in the books, I left the uh, the games back on my desk, so I can't really go over the differences. Um, but week seven or week 16, out of all the games, it was a rough week for me in picks. Not necessarily on this, but in my fantasy league, it was awful because we pick on the spread and it was terrible. Games were hard to choose this week. Um, so out of the, what, 16 games, uh, last week I got nine correct picks and Malik, you finished with eight. So I did take a one point lead. Okay. So at one thirty to one twenty nine, I do know the notable game that I saw with picks. For some reason you did pick the Raiders last week against the Steelers. I picked the Steelers because I finally told myself I wasn't going to go for the Raiders anymore. Um, I but I did been, not realize they were retiring Franco Harris's jersey and doing that tribute ceremony. If I knew that, I would have taken the Steelers. I apologize. It's okay. We've Steelers been Nation we've been stooped by the Raiders all season. This week, we do not have to pick the Raiders. There's no way. So, starting on Thursday night, tomorrow night, we got Dallas at Tennessee. Tennessee has lost five straight games. They're not very good. And Ryan Tannehill is probably out for the season. Malik Willis versus Dak Prescott, who is playing real. I, it's something about Dak Prescott, man. Yeah. Cowboys fans at this point really, do, they're like not into him. Mm-hmm. But he has these games where he looks like a top five guy. I'll tell you what. He has these types of games. Off the top of my head, I feel like Dak Prescott is comparable to Matthew Stafford. Some plays, you're like, wow, how did he do that? And then there's some plays where he's like, wow. Why did he do that? <laughs> and that's wrong. how I just feel lately. You have, you have a point. Some of the interceptions that Dak Prescott has thrown lately Puzzling, have been wild. To say the least. <laughs> so, to say the least. But he's made some plays, um, yeah. and that's undeniable. I have no it's, idea how you take Tennessee yeah. in this game. Unless you think this is Malik Willis's like breakout. No. <laughs> exactly. No. you got to go Cowboys. And Dallas has been putting up a lot of points lately. Yeah. And here we go. Chicago at Detroit. The Lions looked pitiful last week. They did. And it was so disappointing. Especially because I was already nervous about this this Chicago game. The last time the Lions played at Chicago and Justin Fields ran all over them. They missed an extra point. The Lions did end up winning by one. It was cool because they beat 
Chicago at Soldier Field. Now they get to be at Ford Field where they've been good all season. But man, I'm nervous about this game. And the spread now is like six and a half. Which feels way too much. Like the lines are favored six and a half. The Bears lost last week, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Bears only have three wins, but they've played a lot yeah. of close games. Justin Fields is kind of an X factor. You said it's in Detroit, right? Yes. Lions. I got to pick the Lions because they have to win. Otherwise, they're out. But I will not lie. I'm nervous. All right. Battle of the Birds, the Boring Birds, the Cardinals at the Falcons. Give me Desmond Ritter's first win. I think Colt McCoy is supposed to be back for this game. Desmond but. Ritter showed some signs in that Baltimore game. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing him as he's getting better. Yeah. I want to take a risk, but I don't think this is the game. I do agree. I think Atlanta's just a better team right now. They're actually getting something out of Tyler Algier finally. Like It seems like he's kind of figured out his spot in the offense. Um, I still don't like their offense, but yeah, I, I, th- I see some signs for them. So I will also go with Atlanta, unfortunately. Um, oh, jeez. Denver at Kansas City. Listen, the Hackett man is gone. Can we give a small clap for that? I guess Hackett is out. They may be. They may be getting rid of a two hundred fifty million dollar quarterback though in the offseason. What I've heard is they think he might be fixable, Joey. Joey I did hear that. <laughs> I haven't listened to that one, but Russ could be fixable. I'm curious, which is terrifying to hear. And I'm not even a Broncos fan. People are bringing up that you know he finally has enough touchdowns to tie the number of bathrooms in his mansion. That's the big talk of the town lately. Uh, yikes! Broncos country, let's cry. <laughs> Kansas City wins. That's a good one. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Let's somewhere. sigh. <sighs> yikes. Yeah. Kansas City, easy. Yeah. Miami at New England. This will be a Teddy Bridgewater game because Tua is in concussion protocol again. Mm-hmm. He has a lot to consider in the offseason, but let, yeah. we'll get to that another day. Yep, and he may be out the rest of the season, which is wild. For a team that was red hot at one point, people thought they could be contenders, um, and now they're kind of on the fringe. And same with New England. New England's kind of on the edge right now. They're... They're a weird team. I have a – I don't know if this is a hot takey, hot takey question. Is Bill Belichick close to the end? I think he should be, but – I think this staff he, he has put together, his continuing problem to not be able to draft skill talent, and just the fact that guys make horrible decisions playing for him now. Yeah. Patriots teams of the past 20 years don't do what they've done. In the mm-hmm. this season, yeah, but I feel like also the Bill Belichick of old would not have Matt Patricia as his offensive coordinator. That's why that's the staff he's put together. It seems like I don't know if he's losing touch or mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, because Matt Patricia has been the worst thing for Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. Like Ramondre Stevenson has been the one positive. Mm-hmm. They they showed a lot of positives last year in Mac Jones' rookie year. Yeah, like Hunter Henry, their signings were looking good. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go Miami. Okay. This is I, I I just don't see even with Tua out, I still like them more than what New England yeah. is right now. Yeah. I think I mostly agree with you. Um and Teddy Bridgewater is obviously one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league. But there's something about this game that I feel like New England's gonna gonna win. I'm gonna go with New England. I mean they played the Bengals close, even though they didn't Look that great. I mean, Ramondre Stevenson fumbled the ball twice. That that was a weird game. Yeah, Joe threw a few picks. Like it was getting out of hand in the mm-hmm. first half. They were weren't they up like twenty one nothing? Yeah, yeah twenty two nothing. I believe they were cruising. Yeah. Um, but I do think New England's defense is still good enough. They are. Um, they found yeah. something with that uh, Marcus Jones, the special teamer. He's they play him on offense now. He's he's electric yeah, versatility. Um, he had another big interception return for a touchdown in the last game. So I just think their their defense is gonna get it gun get it done. Uh Colts at the Giants. Must win scenario for the Giants. Um Colts are a weird team too. Like they don't have Jonathan Taylor the rest of the season. They, they started they, Nick Foles and it didn't go he well. It looked real bad. Um I thought they would have swapped to Sam Ellinger at some point in the game. I don't know why they just didn't st- I, I just it was probably because of they hired Jeff Saturday. Yeah. But you announced Sam Ellinger starting for the rest of the season, and then three weeks later, you hire Jeff Saturday, and that all goes out the window. Yeah. 
I don't get it. Yeah, it's weird. I don't get it either. It's it's in New York. Yes. Even if it was in Indianapolis, I'd take the Giants. Daniel Jones has shown a lot of improvement this season. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. How he played in Minnesota, like he's throwing some like some really nice passes. Yeah. And he's playing with confidence. Brian Dayball has brought something out of him. Yeah. I'll I'll take the Giants. I'm gonna go to the Colts. For no reason. Interesting whatsoever. choice, Joey. It is. It is, and I'll probably <laughs> regret it. But just gonna go with it. Uh New Orleans at Philadelphia. Minshew looked all right. He looked pretty good. Uh I mean I, I'm not jumping on this. Jalen Hurts is definitely a system quarterback because Gardner Minshew played well thing. Mm-hmm. But Gardner Minshew, he's one of the best backups in the league. Yeah. But he made some pretty bad mistakes at the same time. I, some of the fumbles didn't he had one of the fumbles right? Yeah. Well, he had some bad picks too, though. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. Um, man, New Orleans is so weird. Like, there's so many weird teams. That Cleveland game was all on Cleveland. I'd barely <sighs> counted as a Saints win. That was a Browns L. Yeah. Capital L. And for New Orleans, like, where is Jameis Winston? Like, this is one of the weirdest things. Like, I get that he was hurt. Maybe they're saving him for next season, but don't you want to see what, he, what he's got? Listen. It's, it's so weird. The Tamus, the Tamus, <laughs> the Taysom Hill experience Please is just a here. weekly. Are you, what? That's I, the take? I don't want it. Why? I don't want it. I feel now, like it. Isn't it great that there's a player in the NFL that can play three or four different positions? I feel like. And do just, them pretty well? I just feel like if messes with the whole flow of their team I, I don't know i just don't i don't like it personally that's that <laughs> that, that that breaks my heart joey yeah. that honestly breaks my heart <laughs> i'm going philly <laughs> all right i am too but I, I love watching Taysom, man there are times where he's the only guy that can make plays for them maybe it's that's not his fault you know maybe it's biased because i'm a fantasy guy and Taysom hill like messes with all the fantasy statistics and stuff as a as a non-fantasy guy i think that's hilarious so i don't know i I don't know may the taste and experience reign forever (laughs) carolina at tampa bay so carolina's good uh, question mark i i don't know either i can't form the words because i don't know what this is this is like a huge game technically if they started Sam Darnold all season, do you think they'd have like nine wins? <laughs> I don't know. If they win, because it looks like he's the quarterback, they just should yeah. have been starting. If they win this game, I think they have the tiebreaker over in Tampa Bay. That is the, hilarious for the South. I'm not That's, sure. Wow. I'm going with Carolina. I'm going with Tampa Bay. Tom Brady has just each time you think he's going to bounce back, he's just he's struggled. Yes, I, he made a game winning drive, but I think the team overall just doesn't have much juice yeah anymore mm-hmm. tom brady also it's clearly aging yeah but yeah i i just think i'm, I'm gonna go tampa bay i'm just gonna go with it cleveland at washington carson wentz is back hooray yeah another quarterback shuffle <laughs> wentz versus watson yeah you tuning in for that one no <laughs> i know it's like big for washington because they need the win but I don't even. I don't even know if I want to. Like, I don't know who to pick in this game. I, because there's times where like uh, Cleveland looks like they got signs of life, and then they just look awful. So I, I don't know. This is a this is a weird one. This is a really weird game. And I also this think is a really. Weird I also think Carson Wentz has a chance to just go off in this game because all their weapons are available. You pick the Commanders. Jahan Dotson's look good. I'm going to pick Washington. I talked myself into it. I can see it going either way, though. Carson Wentz is either going to have, like, 350 yards and three touchdowns, or he's going to have, like, 200 yards and three interceptions. Um, the three and two in their last five, the Browns. They played the Bills close. This is a – I'm going to regret this. Give me the Browns. <laughs> Just, just. Uh. I mean, I, I'm, I was almost leaning Browns. I, I, I can see it. Jacksonville at Houston. Houston got their second win of the season. 
because the Titans stink. Yeah. Malik Willis. Gonna need some more. The time. team they're playing is on a bit of a roll right now. Yeah. Because that quarterback is emerging. And those that skill talent that everybody thought they overpaid on, mm-hmm. they're all like an extremely high quality, well balanced receiving core. Yeah. Evan Ingram isn't dropping balls. Zay Jones is making big catches. It's all just it's working. Mm-hmm. Who would have known if you got a good actual NFL coach? Yeah. <laughs> and, what could happen? And uh I think I heard this game doesn't matter because Jacksonville plays Tennessee the last week of the season. So that's what determines it. Yeah. So even if they lose this something like that. That's which hilarious. which is weird. Um so it all comes down to Jacksonville at Tennessee week eighteen. I assume we're both going Jags. Houston's defense is like not that bad. So you're still on the Davis Mills train is what you're telling me. Ah, no. <laughs> that's what you're, that's what you're no. saying to me right now. That's what I'm sensing. It's coming off of you right now. I'm going to go. You know what? I'm going to go Houston. They're going to throw away their top pick. Great pick. Accidentally. Fantastic pick. You picked Cleveland in the last one, so I'll give you, <laughs> give you a chance here. I love throwing it back to me. That's pro stuff right there. <laughs> San Francisco at Vegas. I will not go against the almighty – Brock. Yeah, me neither. I can't pick yeah, Vegas. You would be insane, too. Yeah. Especially against this team. Jared Stidham starting. Derek Carr <laughs> sitting the rest of the season. Wow. Ugh. Yuck. Vegas, time to blow it up. You got, a nice, the, you got a nice stadium. Move the franchise again. Oh, Vegas no. doesn't deserve this. Uh, Listen, once they get the NBA team, it'll be fine. It's this stench of the yeah. Raiders, man. They got a lot yeah. to figure out. In the offseason. A lot. Uh, the New York Jets at Seattle. This is a really interesting it's a matchup. big game. It's a big game. Mike White is back. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson is deactivated. Third, he's third stringer behind Joe even, Flacco. He's not even activated. And there's a lot of talk. He may be moved in the offseason. Yeah. Seahawks are still trying to fight mm-hmm. for a chance. Yep. Both these teams fighting for a playoff spot. Both teams have lost a lot of their chance to. They need some help because they've been losing lately. But. Geno Smith has had an excellent season, man. Mm-hmm. It is. They struggled mightily, though, last week against Kansas City, who's normally not that greatest of defense. I'm, I'm going to make a deep cut comparison to Geno Smith and what he's done. Do you remember the legend of Tommy Maddox, Joey? No. <laughs> Steelers quarterback, well, originally drafted by the Broncos in the 90s, came in as a high draft pick, was only like 20 or 21 was a bust. He retired, became a real estate agent. Oh boy. Came back and won comeback player of the year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Led them to the playoffs. Won a playoff game. Mm. Tommy Maddox, number eight. Steeler legend. Hmm. Gino didn't completely disappear, but he was a backup for several years. Yes. And he's just gotten better. He gets a and revenge game. I, I have so much respect for Gino. And because of what you just said. Seahawks. And I'm going to go the Jets. I think their hey. defense their defense has shown up a lot. Yeah. Um, and they're a better defense than the Kansas City Chiefs. And Seattle struggled against them a lot. Um, and Mike White's back, so that's going to make Garrett Wilson better. It's going to make Zonovan Knight better. I just think the Jets are going to maybe sneak their way into the playoffs. Oh, geez. We got to go really fast. Yeah. Okay. We got a rapid fire. Minnesota at Green Bay. I had to throw in the Tommy Maddox thing. <laughs> Minnesota at Green Bay. I'm going with Minnesota. I want Green Bay out of the playoffs. They got one win, and people are talking all smack about them. Are they back? Are they going to make a run? Minnesota. No. Minnesota. Get Aaron Rodgers' mouth out your name. Wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> It's been a long weekend. Yes. I just came back from vacation. <laughs> what he said. But we're going we're gonna to keep that. Keep it. Uh, the L.A. battle, the Rams at the Chargers. Chargers, we finally get to see Justin Herbert in the playoffs. They clinched the playoff spot? Yes, they did. Good for the Chargers. Man. I'm excited for that, actually. I'm going to go with the Chargers. I think they're going to keep going. Um, and we need the Rams to lose, Listen, even though they put up 51. Just, just for the fans of San Diego, the real Chargers fans. That's what I'm taking the Chargers for. The ones that deserve this. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Actually a pretty important game. Steelers have a chance to make it into the playoffs. I'm going to go with 
No, I'm not going with Pittsburgh. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, I got to go with Baltimore. Yeah. Steelers offense still look extremely below average playing against the Raiders. Yeah. I and mean, I think Baltimore's starting to figure it out a little bit. And then the Monday night matchup. It's a good one. This is a top tier quarterback matchup. Could be a playoff matchup. We got the Bills playing the Bengals. Hmm. Listen, I mean, Josh Allen, 32 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Joe Burrow, 34 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Mm-hmm. Both have shown. They're throwing it a lot. Both have shown some incredible games and some not so great ones. Um, I'm going to go with the Bills, though, I think. I think they're just, you know, they're just the better team. Um, I'm going to go with the Bengals. Okay. That's yeah. a good, that's, that's a good fair 50 50. Um, but I don't know. I just think. I don't I don't know what I think. I just think the Bills are going to win. Um all right. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any time to talk about the NBA or Luka Doncic, so we'll have to talk about it next week. Um maybe he does something crazier this week. Um but college football playoffs begin this weekend. Should be another super fun weekend of sports. Um yeah. Happy New Year's everyone, and we're about to be into 2023. We'll see you next year. This has been Views from the Sidelines. See you guys next time. Michigan could win the national championship, which means I'm most likely going to be sad. Happy New Year's and go blue. Stay tuned.